Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep telling y'all, if y'all don't know who that DJ is by now, y'all will know. It's DJ Ryan Wolf, y'all. Hottest DJ up in Cleveland. If you guys want to check him out, definitely hit him up on his Instagram. Five o'clock fire. DJ Ryan Wolf on Instagram. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you for playing me in, cuz. All right, all right. My name's Lockout Men, and welcome to another Lockout Men podcast show. I have an interview for you guys today. Another interview, as always. This is where you can come and find the freshest interviews, the interesting people, interesting truck drivers that's out here that's doing the damn thing that, that wants to come on and share their experiences here with me on on the podcast and i really and truly do appreciate it if you guys like videos like this don't forget to hit that like button but as of right now i got a special guest that's coming on today and me and this dude i, I say me and this guy we we kind of go back uh we we kind of go back a little bit let me see if i can bring up his uh let's see hold on i gotta yeah, here we go. Yeah, we we go back a little bit, way back, and he first hit me up in 2018. Can you guys believe that? That's when I was still. That's when I was still. Was I still? Days. Was I still at Schwoogle? No. Yeah. 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 I think I was still. Yeah, at you Shwoogle. were. Yeah, I was still at uh at uh at J and R Schwoogle, man. He hit me up and he was like, "Yo, I'm about to head up there myself and see what Schwoogle is all about, man." But uh, now, you know, I, I don't believe he's no longer with Shugo. He he did a stint out with a company out in uh, Denver, and now he works with his brother. Brother, right? Your your family. Uh, this fabrication, yes, uh, fabrication place. Yes, sir. Alpha Bird Fabrication. All right, all right. I want to welcome Sean Schwartz to the show. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's let's start. Let's let's just jump right into it and 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 start at the beginning, man. What are you? This is back in uh back in the winter time of 2018, and you hit me up, and you said that you was heading out to uh, J and R Swoogle that Sunday. What happened? If you could remember that far. What happened with Swoogle? Yes. Uh, and I got a lot. I got a. I've done a lot of things in my CDL in four years. But Shugo, I went to Shugo after a local gig. Uh, I went to Shugo. You know, they promised me this, promised me that, promised me the miles, and they have nice trucks, nice equipment. But the money, as I'm sure that's probably why you might have left. The money really isn't that great. Uh, you know, you might be banging eight fifty on a good week. You might get over a thousand, but very rarely I ever did. Uh, and I'm out of Florida, which makes it a little harder, um, you know, because I live in Florida. Trying to get in and out of Florida isn't the easiest. Exactly. But uh, what happened with Shugo was I was, like I said, I was going through a divorce also at the same time. But well, hold up, hold was, up, hold up. Let me let me let me interject for a second. Let me interject for a second. Um, right. Of course, uh, the 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 main the the main reason that I left. Hold on, right quick. Okay. The main reason that I left was because of the uh because of the fleet manager. Uh unfortunately for me the money was kind of good for me. But the the fleet manager issue that I had after my original fleet manager left that's why that's that's why I left. Plus uh plus me and Don didn't see eye to eye on a few things either, so it was. Is that it the was, safety guy? Yeah, yeah. It it was kind of it was kind of oh, yeah. 
you know, it 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 was kind of another reason that uh that I left too because you know not the main reason was the fleet manager, but you know there was a little you know little quartz between me and Don that we really couldn't really couldn't see eye to eye, and it was best for me to you know take my exit while I had you know why everything was still good there. Um, but the money for you though, um. Did you come out of Did you come out of school to go to Schwugel? Oh no, wait, my fault, my fault. I my, I misheard you. You said you was you was driving local, and then you got with Schwugel. So you already had your CDLs prior to coming into Schwugel. Yeah, I got my CDL uh, June of 2016. Uh, mm-hmm. I got my CDL six weeks after my son was born. Uh, that was the reason that jump started me. To, now here I'm a just put it out there. I was, I, I got out of prison in two, October 2014. Um, then I started working with my pop. Uh, he does stump grinding, commercial mowing, and stuff like that. And it was good money. But once I found out I had a baby on the way, it wasn't enough steady income, you know, uh, to, to maintain a baby and a house and all that. So I was like, I'm going to get my CDL. I went to Tampa Truck Driving School. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I had to put fifteen hundred dollars down because I had a fel- you know, a bunch of felonies, and uh, then I went to Trans Am. That was my first company. And how how I'll hard? What, how, I, how how hard was it? Uh, how hard was it for a felon? Now you say you you jump right in and you worked it with your pops company, but after you got out, man, how 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 hard was it for you to to land any job? You know what? I'll tell you what, and this is this is this is a hundred percent honesty. If you got work ethic, and you don't, um, it's the, I mean, not the best jobs, but the jobs are out there. I I went to work release my last year, and I went to BJ's Brew House as in Kissimmee, Florida, as a dishwasher. Mm-hmm. And when I got out uh, for nine dollars an hour, I worked a year there, and I actually saved three thousand dollars. So when I came home. I had three thousand dollars, you know, but I was so I was able to get a little piece of junk car with insurance and all that. But then I transferred to the BJ's in Tampa, where I'm from, and I got a whopping I think ten twenty five an hour, and I maintained that for like three months. Then I switched to Ruby Tuesdays for eleven dollars an hour, and I worked that for almost eight nine months. And then, you know, working forty hours a week, bringing home four hundred bucks, man, it just uh, you know, I can't live like that. But That's I was trying to not go back to work. You know, I, I went to prison. I went to prison for drug trafficking. So I was trying not to go back to that life. Uh, and so I called my pops. He's retired. My dad was vice president of um, Sitco Petroleum, uh, PCT, which is uh, the petrochemical transportation, the gasoline distribution side of Sitco. Was my dad was vice president for in Addison, Texas. And he he retired from there and opened Tampa Tank Lines, which is another uh, gasoline distribution thing. My parents divorced. They liquidated everything. So I've always had an interest in truck fast. So I got my – then I uh, – you know, I'm working to get to a uh, – you, you, you you breaking up a little bit. Are, are you on a headset? Hold on one second. Let yeah, you, yeah, if you're on a headset – better. Too, yeah, that's much better. Much that better. Much, okay, much better. My bad. And I can hear you clear too. Um, so um Okay, so, my okay, bad. so why I got you on a pause right quick. Um how okay, so you say you went to you 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 went to you so federal prison for drug trafficking charge? No, I went to state, state oh, prison state in Florida. Prison. How how long oh. how how what was your bid for, if I may ask? I did fifty four months. Four and a half years. You did four and a half years, four long yep. years. I take it. Um, oh yeah. How if I if if I want to let me let me squeeze a little bit more into your situation. Mm-hmm. How did how did you get caught? Uh, I got caught by a girl that I used to, you know, have relationships with. Blah blah blah. She ate dinner with my family. Mm-hmm. She got caught up. And she set six of us up, me being one of the six. And uh, I sold, at that time, you know, Florida was the pill mill state, and I sold her 40, 
40 oxycodone 30s, which we called Roxy's down here. Right. Sold her 40 of those three separate times. So they actually charged me with three separate counts of drug trafficking. And then they raided my house, and that gave me a, eight more felonies. I left that one day with 13 felonies. Wow. So what was the so yep. so so? But you only got four years for all. Of, I, I mean, all of them. I'm sure your lawyer kind of pleaded down the rest. Yeah, I uh, I was looking at 12 years. That's what I scored out to. Um, I had an earlier conviction in 2005 of uh, cocaine, but I completed the probation and did everything. So I was actually got a downward departure. With my lawyer, after 14 months, he uh, he got me a downward departure. I pled out guilty to everything. But I have $162,000 in fines, and it's like child support. If you don't pay it, they take your license. So I have to pay. It's, they, they bless me. I, I pay $50 a month for the rest of my life till I die. You know, And if I don't pay that, then they spend my license. They'll take your license. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, man, so coming out, so coming out uh, after you got with your pops and everything, you rocked out with your pops. Uh, what was your inspiration into getting into trucking and how was it, how was it for you being a felon getting into trucking? Um, the inspiration for trucking was out of, out of, uh, necessity, uh, having never really worked before. I mean, I had a few jobs here and there, but I really, I really just sold drugs. I mean, I never really worked. So it was out of necessity and that's the, you know, the quickest way to earn a decent living. I thought, um, and, you know, and then I went to Trans Am and found out a different thing, but uh, that was, I had a baby on the way. So that was, you know, out of necessity, I got into it mm -hmm. and I, I, I liked it. Um, and being in, I'll tell you what, being in prison, that'll breed you for truck driving. I mean, essentially you are in your own little, not prison, you have a lot of essentials, but it is, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you're by yourself locked away in your truck, you know, it, it, it it'll breed you to be a truck driver if you've ever been to prison. So, uh, and like I said, I, I called and they told me I had to pay 1500 bucks and they couldn't guarantee me a job, but I, I my truck driving school, but I had done my research and I knew Trans Am hires anybody. It doesn't matter. They hire anybody. Okay. Um, so I went to school, I passed that. And then I went to Trans Am, um, did my 11 days training and I, but I did learn not the least. I learned that from my dad. I learned that from reviews. Don't lease. So a lot, I think out of 17 of us, 14 went lease and three went company. And the only three that were there after 90 days were, the, were us three that went company. So if yes. anybody's listening, don't do lease at Trans Am. You say, uh, don't, you say don't do don't lease do at, at Trans Am. What was, what was other experiences? Absolutely not. What was other experiences at Trans Am and how long was you there for? I stayed for my full year too because they you know they had the reimbursement program for the school so I, I stayed my full year at Trans Am so I had my you know my CDL school paid off I didn't want to leave owing them money um and I that I'll tell you what that year at Trans Am as far as experience goes not pay it was the best thing that ever happened as far as learning every situation that could pop up in that industry ever uh, you will learn with Trans Am uh because of what, you know, the, the way that they work with communication, you can't get a hold of those people. They send you to Brooklyn, you know, uh, and they don't answer the phone. You know, anything that you could think could go wrong is going to go wrong, and you'll learn any situation to get out of at Trans Am. The pay, the biggest paycheck I ever got, and I stayed out five, six weeks at a time now. I don't go home every week. The biggest paycheck I ever earned at Trans Am as a company driver was $688. Say what? $688 was the biggest check I ever earned at Trans Am. What? For what? And for for 2,000 miles? Well, I, if you, I don't know if you ever heard about Trans Am. If you're a company driver, all you do is relay. You just relay. That's all you do. You might get one run a week that you actually start and finish your, your dispatch, but all they do is relay you to lease drivers. You right. know what I mean? How much? So, so how much you was, so how much you was making there? What was the cent per mile for you? 30, you start off 30, it's either 32 or 33. Yes, yeah, sir. Nothing. Wow. 
Well, but I didn't I have mean, a choice. But you, know you didn't what I mean? have no I, choice, right? Because you know that was the only company mm-hmm. that that will that will pull you in. And it's unfor it's mm-hmm. it's it's really unfortunate that you know you you got you got secondhand companies that does that. But you know at least at, at least you wanted to get it out the way, get your experience up under your belt, so that you can show and prove to the next potential company that 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 comes up, they say, Hey, you know, I, I was a felon. I'm I got a my, year experience. Right, I yes, got sir. a year experience. I'm getting my life together. I'm not trying to go back to, uh, not trying to go back to that life. So help me out here. So let me rewind for a little bit. Uh, let me rewind back to the, back to the, to the, to the life. So when you got out, um, you did your four years, you got out, uh, you was, what is what what they call that after you get out? Uh, pro, uh, not probation. No, I had no probation or parole. I oh, didn't have parole. parole. I didn't have anything. Oh, okay, Nothing. okay. I so got out free and clear. Okay, so you didn't have to worry about going back and forth to uh your parole officer to make sure that you're driving and and all like that. Being, yeah, none of that. Being a felon and working and working your way through the trucking industry at at Trans Am, did you have any issues going out of state? No, uh, uh-uh. no. The only issues that I still run into to this day is I can't run any freight, you know, onto military bases or anything like that. That's oh. the only thing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because of your because of your uh, convention background. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yep. okay, okay. All right. So Trans Am. Well, we're back at Trans Am. Trans Am kind of you know gave you your start. You 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 muddled through. Changed there. my life, honestly. I, I will. If someone's a felon. This is what I'll say. If someone's a felon and they're serious about truck driving and they want that to be their career, Trans Am, you have nice equipment. You're not going to, you're not, any trucking company, you're not going to get a, the most money your first year. So, Trans Am, if you're a felon and you can't get hired anywhere else, I would, I would recommend Trans Am, do not lease, get your year and get out. And it's like getting your AA, you know, once you got that year under your belt. You get a lot more options pop up. You know how it is. So, right. I mean, I would I would recommend them somebody in my situation. Now, anybody that doesn't have a felon, anything like that, obviously, that's the worst, last place you'd want to go. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Trans Am. So from so from there, then you went to J and R Swoogle. I'm sorry. Say that again. I said from Trans Am. Then you went to J and R Swoogle. No, 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 no. Oh, you Trans went, Am. Damn it, man. Why I keep forgetting? You say you went local. Okay, so you went local, and then you went to J&R. Well, you, you could literally call me kind of a job hopper after I got that year. Okay. I was really trying. I was really trying to uh, find the best job. Right off the bat, but I went through a couple little mishaps. So I, I got a local job in Tampa. Uh, de- <clears throat> delivering concrete, you know, like the concrete mixers. Yeah. Uh, so I, I started doing that and I worked there for about a year, but I also, I also did going in and out of the main plate, like going to the semi trucks with the uh, pneumatic trailers that uh-huh. you go and get the dried powder cement. Yeah. I was, so I would, I would work all day doing residential jobs with, you know, with the mixer. And then at night, I would run that cement. I was working way too. We had no logs. You know, I was working crazy hours. All their equipment was junk. But I was home every night. Then, as I mentioned before, I, I went through a divorce. That's when that started. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, have you heard of R.C. Moore? Um, you, pro- you only see them on the East Coast. Uh, they're black trucks. They're R.C. Moore. They have about 100 trucks. They go from Maine to Florida. And they have – that's where I went after – after I got done with the uh, cement company, then I went to R.C. Moore um, and worked there, which wasn't bad. But then I, that wasn't a bad company. Um, it was it was pretty good pay, but it, it, they had junk equipment and stuff like that. So okay. I had the hot idea that I was going to go to the oil field. And I went out to run frac sand out there in uh, New Mexico. And that was the worst experience of my life was going out there. Um, I went to a company that as soon as I got there, they lost their biggest contract of their company. And I was literally ended up basically homeless in New Mexico wow. in the truck out there. 
uh, and, and they just trickled down to where they had no more jobs. They, they the telltale sign, their fuel cars all shut off. Wow. Uh, it was terrible. It was terrible. I mean, there's a lot of people. I made a lot of money out there doing frack sand, but then I uh, I was working there, and they had me switching trucks all the time because they're always breaking, and I lost my wallet in New Mexico. So I lost all my cert, my cert, certifi- uh, certification cards. Uh, I lost my ID, lost everything out there. Now, you can't get on a plane ticket if you don't have your ID. So right, I had to right. take a Greyhound bus for four days from New Mexico all the way back to Tampa. Oh, um, man. And I was, I literally went broke out there. I mean, it was the worst experience of my life out there. Wow. A lot of money to be made in the oil fields. That was just well, my experience. A lot, that was just a, lot of, a lot of money to be made, but you, you, you got the short end of the stick when, when they brought you out there. How did you find it? How did you find yeah, that? Just, how did you find was, that company? I mean, where, where you found the company? Craigslist. 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 I had a bunch, I had some buddies out there, but they weren't driving trucks. They were doing surveying. So they were making good money. And they're like, just get out here. It doesn't matter. And they're, everybody's paying. So that, I, that was literally the first company that I called. They hired me. I literally rented. At that time, I was going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. So my finances weren't that great. I didn't have a credit card. So I couldn't get a rental car. So I, I, <laughs> I drove a box truck from Charlotte, North Carolina with one suitcase in it all the way to uh, Carlsbad, uh, New Mexico. You know, wow. all I, I showed up there. You would have thought I was, when I showed up there, people were like, man, where did you move from? I'm like, my truck. I opened the back. There's one suitcase back there. That's all. <laughs> I drove it all. Because you could, you could buy it with a debit card. You didn't need a credit card, you know? Wow. So, man, there. You, took um, a, you, you, took there for, you, you took a U-Haul down to that bad boy, huh? Oh, yeah, because I, I was done with – my air conditioner went out with R.C. Moore, and they tried to tell me to, oh, well, don't worry about it. Go deliver this load. And then in the morning – I mean, we're talking about summertime of 17, I believe, 18 maybe. Uh, yeah, 18, because later that year is when I contacted you. Um, so it was summertime, and they're like, oh, just stay overnight in the truck, and in the morning bring it to the shop. It's like 4 in the afternoon. I've already had no AC all day. Now, I'm not – I'm not doing yeah, it. You, you know what I mean? I'm telling you y'all. You can't do that, man. I'm not, I'm not staying in this truck they all night again you, with no AC. You they know, I'm not doing you, it. They wouldn't and, get you a hotel or anything like that? Oh, no. They, no. Oh, no. They, they, they just told me to stay in the truck. So I said, all right. All right. So you guys aren't going to fix it. They said, well, we told you what it is. So over the little Qualcomm, I messaged you back. I'm delivering. I, now, mind you, I was only 15 miles from, from one of their terminals in South Carolina. So it wasn't like. I couldn't just pull there and another driver could have taken my load. It wasn't due till the morning, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, they told me, no, they wouldn't do that. So I went ahead and took the truck there and got an, uh, got an Uber and went right to the budget place. And that's when I got the budget rental truck and drove it all the way across the country to Carlsbad and had that experience. I was there for about six months and that went bad. And by the time I made it home, I went and worked for a uh, transfoss which is a, uh, they haul phosphate out of the mines down here in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, and they pay by the load. And by the time you're looking at, uh, you're looking at about six days a week, you're looking at about bringing home 700 bucks a week max. And so you, at that time, just ain't enough. So all, all this time, you just trying to find your footing, man. So where, where trying did you? Trying to find my foot. Yeah. So where, so where did, where do J and R Swoogle fit into all of this? Jan R. Shugel fits in right after that local company. I was on Facebook, uh, you know, at Brianna, she's always on Facebook posting stuff, you know, and at that time it was right before Christmas of 18, you know, huge sign on incentive. I didn't read that. I thought it was sign on bonus, but sign on incentive. Mm-hmm. I never hit my 10,000 miles ever, uh, to get that little sign on incentive. You know how they had the $10,000. Mm-hmm. They would pay you so many. I never hit it. Never once. And I, again, I'm not a driver that goes home every other week. I just stay out minimum four weeks. So it wasn't, it was just, I went and then they tried to put me on a dedicated, the one from like Minnesota, Missouri, all these little craft places. Mm -hmm. And then when I was ready to go home, they would get me a load to Florida. I'd come back to dedicated. That didn't work out. They, they, they couldn't do that because I was going to two different fleets and I had all that corporate BS they have. Um, So I worked there for six months and I made, 
it was like a roller coaster. I'd have a decent week, and then the next week would suck. A decent week, and it was just a roller coaster, you know? They don't care about your paycheck. They don't. You know, as mm-hmm. long as their trucks are moving, then that's okay to them. They're contracted freight. They're making money. Mm-hmm. Um, now, rewind to, uh, I had a buddy of mine. We were both in prison together in Florida, and and we had kept in contact. And when he got out, he continued working for Applebee's. That's who he worked for in prison. And he called me one day, man, I need to make some money. How, what do you, you know, I see you're driving CDL. I talked him into getting a CDL. Lo and behold, all this time later, he calls me when I'm working for Shuko. And he's like, he's sending me, he, he's screenshotting me a paycheck. And he's like, hey, man, you need to come over here, man. You need to come over here. You need to come over here. And I'm like, ah. And so I did. And when wait, I tell you, life wait, changing. Wait, what? Go ahead. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So we, so. He's working at a different company, uh, making mm-hmm. you know making rev- relatively good money, and he shot you a screenshot of his paycheck, and that that pretty much that pretty much was the reason why you left Schwugel. But while you was at Schwugel, uh, doing the road, who who was your fleet manager at the time at at Schwugel? I started with a girl. Um... I Kate Katie, I wanna say. Uh Haley. no not Kate. Haley. Hey, you know what? Haley. Um, Haley, 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 Haley. That's Th- that's her and she that's why I couldn't make no money, man. This girl As... would put me on an eight hundred mile load for three and a half days, you know? Exactly. And exactly. That's who you had to? Yes. That's hilarious. Exactly. That's funny. That's why I couldn't I, stay there. That's, why I, I couldn't, that's I why, why I couldn't stay there either because she wasn't. <laughs> she, like I said, before Matt left, I was getting the money. I was making good money. I was I every 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 uh every mile I drove, everything I did, Matt paid me for. With her, I had to pretty much argue and fucking fight. For every little mile I was getting and every little thing I was doing, so yeah, I I I know Haley. She's no longer there with the company, though. I, I don't know what happened, but uh, she's no longer there with the company. All right, so from so from there, uh, from there you went to uh, you went to your 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 buddy's job, and you started driving for them. Uh, fast forward to you know, fast forward to you coming out of it coming out of trucking what was the reason why you decided to uh leave it behind and start doing well here's the thing what you which here's the thing um i don't know how your experience is with who you're working for now unless you're with the guy that i went to work for which you know i i took 90 days i have enough money for bills for 90 days and, I, and I'm doing this business venture with my brother. I, I've invested a lot of money with him and we're doing all right. But here's the deal. I was working for a company that had 10 trucks, 10 trailers, all new trucks, very nice equipment, but we're running spot market freight, which is fine. But if you're not with a mega carrier that has the easy pass to go through the way station and you have to go into every way station, they pick on you a lot. You know what I mean? They really do. Um, so I've had, I think two violations in the first three and a half years of driving. Mm -hmm. I got eight in in, in January. And when I tell you they're all non-critical, I'm talking violations for an unlatched um, fire extinguisher, leaky glad hair airline, you know, leaky uh, glad hand where I just bumped it with my hand. It didn't leak no more. Still violations. Having my GPS on the windshield to where it swept, you know, like, uh, I, have you heard of that one in Michigan? They got mm-hmm. me for wherever the clean part of your windshield is of the windshield wipers. If mm-hmm. you have your GPS mounted in that area, yeah, that's a violation. Yeah, that's a violation. Um, uh, what was the other stupid ones that they gave me? I mean, just, just, just over and over, you know, these violations and I, and it's just crazy. I mean, the money was great. I, I can't, I can't complain about the money. So, it was more of a, so you was getting violations with, with this company out of Denver. The one that you just mm-hmm. mentioned, oh, you was getting violations yeah. oh. with, with the company out of Denver. The money was good, but you was getting violations though. Did you? Did you had to? Of course, that 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 hit your CD. You'll you'll see uh you'll see SA score hard. But did mm-hmm. you had to? Did you had mm-hmm. to pay? You didn't have to pay the violations though that they was writing you up for, right? No, 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 no. He no, he did. But 
you know, he did, but, uh, and they were all non-critical. I never got shut down. I never, nothing like that. They were all non-critical, but it was just annoying. I mean, every time they're pulling me in for inspection after inspection after inspection, I'm like, Jesus, you know, and I just kept, that's one of them. And then just the, uh, I don't know, man. I, I've been to every state trucking. Is, 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 I like it. Um, you know, especially with the pay that I was getting, but it's just like working, working for a company like that. You know, he's been uh, open since 2018. He's one catastrophic event from being out of business. You know what I mean? If, if he had a truck hit somebody and hurt somebody, he's out of business. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. And insurance, he was already starting to bitch about the insurance rates. And now they just doubled starting 2021. Um, so this is, this is what I'm telling you is happening. They are, if you are just your own little owner operator or own a small company, they are going to insurance and violate you to death out of business. That's what's going on. They're doing that right now. And they're going to have automated trucks and mega carriers running this freight. That's what it is. They, the freight rates have gone to such, I mean, they're getting a little better now, but I was seeing them during the coronavirus. I stayed out. I stayed out this last time from, March or February 22nd until July 1st. I was on the road the whole time. Um, never, never went home. Uh, so I, I saw the freight. Well, I was on the load force too with him. And I mean, 98 cents a mile, dollar 10 a mile. And he's losing money. You know what I mean? He was losing money with us driving, but he kept his rolling. He did do that. He kept his rolling. And I mean, I've been saving my money, saving my money. And, and my brother, he is very good at fabricating welding and, custom building bikes and stuff like that. So I've just invested into that and that's where I'm at now. Um, so the, so the OTR, the worst case, so the OTR, OTR job out in, uh, out in, uh, out in Denver, Colorado, mm-hmm. uh, you say here, he's still, you know, he's still in, he's still in business. Uh, you, you said you, you said you liked it, the guy, but I, I'm assuming his equipment wasn't all that hot. If he get if he kept getting violations, no, for it. That's the craziest part. He has all, he has 10 of the same brand. They were at the time I got it, had 108,000. They're all the same trucks. You bought them all at the same time. 2018 Freightliner Cascadia is the new, you know, they're, they're all nice equipment. That's what's even crazier. Trailers are 18. Everything's nice. Uh, he doesn't have the easy pass, you know, to go through, you know, you don't get, you know, green, red yeah, light on it like yeah, you do his, in the mega carrier. So store. every yeah, single way station, yeah, CSA you got to go score, in. He, he must, he probably couldn't get it because of his CSA score, especially if you kept, you know, like you say, you was getting, you was getting cited for every little thing. So, yeah, that kind of made his CSA, CSA score sucks. So he probably couldn't. Uh, oh, yeah. That, he probably couldn't get they it. They even, even told me that. Did, even if he, the, even if he did get it, he probably still they probably still wouldn't let him go through anyway. Yeah, and and they even I got pulled into the Utah Arizona uh, uh, was a port of entry in January, and the lady's like, "Come here," and she showed me that like when you go through, you know, they they have a flash shot of your DOT number, company, and everything, and it has the, your score right there, and we're in red, so every. Mm-hmm. At, at 10 trucks, as soon as I go, goes through. If you're low, the only truck rolling through in Montana, Wyoming, none of those states are, they love to pull you in. My, the, you roll through one of those states, man, they're pulling you in every time for level one, level one. I've passed several, but I've also had stupid, dumb violations a lot, you know? So I just, I see every state, I save some money. Now, he does have trucks available, um, and he, He'll run you to death. He's got a lot of miles, you know, and uh, I, I can go back there any time. You know, he, he already texted me, you know, good luck with what I'm doing. But if I need a job, I always got one. So that's, that's what's up. I don't really want to go back over the road. I, I don't, I'm, I'm done with it. And I, like I said, I was going through a divorce. That, that's been two years in the making. I just got my son uh, now or I get him every, every weekend. So I got to be home now. I've had it the last two weekends. I've only been home since the 1st of July got the last two weekends so my goals now are more focused on you know maintaining a relationship with my son and yeah that's what's up that's what's up and i I don't think you probably could i I don't think you probably could make it 
you know, maintain that if you was an over the road truck driver and you trying to maintain Absolutely a relationship. Not. So getting in with your uh getting in with your brother, man. Let's let's talk about that for a little bit, uh, before we get up out of here. So the name of the company is uh Alpha Bird uh Fabrications. Uh what all what all yeah, do you A L it's A L P H A Alpha Bird Fabrications. Yeah. yeah. So what um, all, what all you guys do there, and how long how long y'all been in? Well, you just started with him, but how long he been in the business of uh, fabricating? Yeah, well, he's been doing fabricating for about thirteen years. But here's the other story: my brother also went to prison. We both went to prison, and he did twelve years. Um, and he got out. This is what's even crazier: he got out last November. Okay. And from last November, I invested with him just because he's my brother, Bob a welder. He was working behind my dad's house literally last November. Um, and he just, and he met a couple of clients. They love his work. And he, this year, this fiscal year, he's already grown us over $300,000 this year. So we got our own shop, nice brick mortar building, nice, beautiful office he has me in. We got, uh, but his main, we, we do, a vast array of things. Uh, he could build a custom chopper. You have to go on, on our Facebook. I, I, I just got here to start the marketing. That's, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but, uh, um, our Facebook, like he built a custom hot dog stand. This guy out of Miami wanted a hot dog stand and he has girls in bikinis selling hot dogs on the beach. So he's like, I want a real flashy one. Mm -hmm. So you have to see it. It's on our page. It's on 22 is all Chrome. With, with the with the fenders that are like one inch off the tire with the whole back of like a tricycle uh harley looking thing and then if you open that up that's where all the condiments and stuff are he's a genius when it comes to building stuff like that we also do fleet maintenance for huge like um lawnmower companies with, and we do all their trailer work we also go and do all my, my brother's uh he graduated ami uh you know doing the small engines uh motorcycle mechanic school back in the day so we go and we do all the fleet maintenance. This guy has like 70 zero turns. He has 25 of the huge bat wing DOT mowers that you see on the interstate, those big John Deere tractors. Mm -hmm. And he does. So literally once a week we go to St. John's County. We go to Arcadia, DeSoto. We go to Miami and we go and do all the maintenance on all their stuff. And if they need welding, we have a whole mobile unit with, uh, with our welder on there. We do, like I said, we do a vast array of stuff, boat trailers, Big tech dump trailers. Uh, I, I pretty pulled, amazing what he's done in six I, months. I mean, I, it honestly is. I pulled up this little, uh, this little chromed out uh, with the what's that twenties on there? A little hot dog stand right there. Twenty two, twenty two yeah, chromed yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, that looks uh, that looks pretty cool, man. That looks pretty awesome right there. So you guys is like you you guys is like uh, you guys is like you know like my favorite TV show. Uh, west coast customs yeah they they do a lot that's of exactly what we're trying to get and we're starting to youtube i just i just got all the camera equipment and mm -hmm. uh I'm, i got the drone we're, i'm trying to learn you know the more market we haven't even advertised yet and except for our little facebook thing and we, we are slammed with business so um i'm gonna I'll try to do a youtube channel just more of and it's, it's also another story in itself is you know everyone thinks being a felon you can't do this you can't do that you can't you know that is true in some certain aspects, but it is what it is. If you got work ethic and you put, you know, I got 14 felonies, you know what I mean? My brother has actually more than I do. Um, we, we were complete F ups. We were, we were, we were terrible. You know, we were just bad people at, at one point in our life, but we both came out and we, and, and we're doing it, man. We're doing it, you know? So as a felon, that's not the end all be all. You can't use that excuse. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Sean Schwartz, man, I, I gotta commend you, bro. I gotta commend you, man. You know, you you uh you got you got locked down, you did your time, and you came back out and you got successful in what you're doing, man. And 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 you showing and proving, you showing and proving that you know, that a felon such as your caliber. You you showing and proving that you can you can be successful out here, so you know you you been you got successful in trucking, you know, and then now you and your brother is successful in your fabrication business, man. I mean, much love to you, bro. Much much love, man. 
So let me ask you this, man. Before hey, we I get, appreciate it. No doubt. Let me ask you this before we get up out of here, man. What uh, advice, and let me turn this down right quick. What advice do you have for the guys that's coming out so they can see they, they can see what you done? What advice do you got for them? The best advice that I got for anybody that wants to get into trucking is you got to make sure that it's something that you want to do. And if you do do it, you got to, whatever you start at, you got to stay for a year. You have to have a year experience before you jump ship and try to do anything else, or you're just going to be spinning wheels because you have to have a minimum of a year experience to get any decent paying job. That's my advice. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Sean Schwartz. Thanks for coming on, man, and chopping it up with me, man. It's beautiful conversation. Positivity all the way around, man. I mean, I blessings to you, bro. Blessings to you and your you and your family, man. Yes, sir. Hey, you check out the Facebook Alpha Bird Fabrications and our YouTube is on the way. All right, all right. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you can do that. Hit me up at the Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com or head over to the Instagram and hit me up over there. You know what I'm saying? Yo, me, me and this man been knowing each other. This is our first time talking, and it's a blessing that he came on and chopped it up with me, man. We've been talking to each other through uh through the uh message, I mean through Messenger, through since 2018 and we actually got it now to get get it out there on the podcast so i i appreciate you uh staying with me bro all right guys yo if you like this video don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button my cousin we about to get him to play us out right quick We about to get my cousin to play us out. And on that note, you guys take it easy. Y'all have a blessed one. And I will come back with you guys with another video. Peace. Brother man, that was awesome, man. That was fucking awesome, man. Listening, hey, li listening to. Uh, I appreciate it, brother. Listening to how you came up from, uh, came up from being a felon to a successful, uh, to a successful entrepreneur, man. That's 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 a blessing in itself, right there, man. Yeah, it is, and, and I don't even like now. I, I've been out, I've been out. Shit, what is it? Almost six years, and. My brother literally just came home six months ago, but I don't even look at it like that no more. It's like, uh, it is what it is. It can hinder some things, but I honestly, people that, that shit pisses me off when, when I hear that people use that excuse that they can't do nothing as a fellow. When I was at Shugel, Shugel will hire people on probation. I saw it in orientation. If, if they'll hire people that are on active probation. Mm. Didn't know that from Shugel. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was a guy from Virginia that uh, uh, that had to what, his thing. He had to call in. This was this was an orientation. They had it all, everything. I couldn't believe it. I, Trans Am didn't even do that. Uh, he had to call in every night and tell them where he slept, and then call him, you know, three times a day, tell him where he was at, submit where he was going. It was crazy. I, but if you're a felon, unless you're a, unless you're a pedophile, then I don't got no respect for you. You're fucked like you know what I'm saying but anything else you know I don't have no now this is another thing I don't I don't know how it is for people that have like armed carjacking or armed robbery I never did nothing like that I just have I just have dope charges you know what I mean mm -hmm. so it could be a little different for people that did some violent crime shit I didn't do none of that you know that's what's up that's what's up well all right Sean man I just uh